Sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine a plus b, cos a plus b, tan a plus b, and similarly sine a minus b, cos a minus b, tangent a minus b. Today we're going to look at the double angle identities. And to do that, we're really going to just use the sum identities and make it so that instead of adding two different angles, a and b, we're going to add two same angles. Okay, so we're going to make A equal to B. So substituting B equals to A results in the formation of what we call double angle identities. Double angle meaning both are the same. So, as your example number one, I'm going to ask you to use the sine, cosine, and tangent sum identities and find their corresponding double angle identities. Here we go sine a and instead of plus b it's going to be a plus a okay which means this will be sine a cosine a plus cosine a sine a well sine a times cosine a same thing as cosine a times sine a so this just simplifies to 2 sine a cosine a. There you have it. Pretty straightforward, eh? Okay. Do the same thing now for cosine. So instead of cosine a plus b, it's cosine a plus a. We have cosine a, cosine a, minus sine a, sine a. So that simplifies to, of course, cosine a times cosine a is cosine a all squared, or most trig people write the square in between, so cosine squared a. And then same idea here, sine a times sine a is just sine squared a. Done! Okay. And then we'll try tangent. Okay. And that'll be the last one, so tangent a plus a is really equal to tangent a plus tangent a all over 1 minus tangent a times tangent a. And that simplifies to 2 tangent a's on the top and on the bottom 1 minus tangent squared a. There you have it, the three double angle identities. Okay. Turn the page. Well, there's actually two other double angle identities for the cosine 2a or 2 theta. I want to show you that they are these two examples in 2a and 2b. But how can we get that? Well, let us actually use the cosine 2a identity that we found from the previous page, which I think was just cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So once again, use that as a starting point for both of them. And hopefully from here, we're going to show you how it simplifies to the expressions in the question. Okay. Well, notice for part A, the right-hand side only involves cosine. So we want to eliminate the sines. Well, how can I rewrite sine squared in terms of cosine? If you're thinking about, hey, that Pythagorean identity, you are absolutely correct. Because remember, I can manipulate this to eliminate either sine squared or cosine squared. So for example, for 2a, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for sine squared, and that equals to 1 minus cosine squared theta. So let's go ahead and replace that in our expression. So instead of having sine squared theta now, I'm going to use 1 minus cosine squared theta. And notice as I distribute, 
I will continue to get cosine squared theta, a minus one, and another plus cosine squared theta. I see cosine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Whoa, look at that. That's just two cosine squared theta minus one. Done. Similarly for part B, then cosine two theta. How can I rewrite it as one minus two sine squared theta? Well, take that Pythagorean identity. I think this time I will ask you to solve for cosine squared theta. And that just equals to one minus sine squared theta. And let's go ahead and plug that in. One minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta. That simplifies to one minus two sine squared theta. And lo and behold, that's the right hand side. We're done. Okay. So we have all of these double angle identities. Now I'm going to ask you to, just like last day, convert these crazy, crazy, sing, uh, sorry, crazy trig expressions and rewrite them as a single trig expression. Notice for part A, I've got cosine squared minus sine squared, and I think that simplifies to, yeah, that simplifies to like cosine of two of the angle, so two theta. Well, theta in this case seems to be just the angle pi over 6. So rewriting 2 times pi over 6, that's the same thing as cosine pi over 3. And of course, that special angle table comes back again. Cosine pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, that just equals to half. And this, once again, is from the special angle table. All right, part B, very similar. Can you match that up with something that we've just done in terms of a double angle identity? If you're thinking about this, sine two A is equal to two sine A cos A, you are absolutely correct. So I want you to rewrite this as sine two A, A seems to be 60. So this simplifies to sine of 2 times 60 is 120 degrees. Once again, 120 is in quadrant 2, a reference angle of 60. So ultimately, this seems to be equivalent to sine of 60. And because it's in quadrant 2, all students take calculus. It's positive. Sine 60 from the chart is just root 3 over 2. All right, <coughs> excuse me. So we've done those type of questions, and now I'm going to ask you to simplify expressions. And of course, all these expressions involve some sort of double angle, so you're gonna have to make a substitution somehow. Okay, let's take a look at 4a, and then we'll try 4b. 4a, simplify each expression. Oh, 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 I see double angles in the numerator and double angles in the denominator. Okay. Now, we're going to have to replace them or substitute. The tricky part here seems to be not the bottom, because I think sine 2a can only be written as sine or 2 sine theta cos theta. It's the top that is worrisome for me, because cos 2 theta, we've seen, can be written as three separate expressions. And as a quick review, we've shown you that cosine 2 theta can be equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. That's from the previous page. And from example number two, we know that this also equals to 2 cosine squared theta, take away 1, and also 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So which is the right choice for us in this scenario? Notice there's already a 1 in front. And there's a minus in front of the cos 2 theta. So ultimately, to simplify, we want to have less terms. Now, if I wrote down or I substituted in the first one, that doesn't really give me less terms. That gives me like three terms now. So that's probably not the best choice. Okay. If I were to substitute this in here, okay, let's see what happens. 
2 cos squared theta minus 1. Okay, notice that I'll distribute, distribute, and I get 1 minus 2 cos squared theta plus 1. And remember how I said we want to have less terms? I still have two terms here. So maybe this isn't the best choice either. So what is our best choice? It's the one that allows us to delete or remove that one on the outside, the, the blue one here. And I think the best for us would be to replace it not with 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, but 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Because now when you distribute, you get 1 take away 1 plus 2 sine squared theta. Of course, the denominator still stays the same. But notice what happens to my numerator. 1 take away 1, that's 0. And that's great, because I now just have 2 sine squared theta. So that's a trick, by the way. When you see a 1 minus something like that with the cosine 2 theta, try to get rid of the 1. Okay. This is nice, because now I can just divide out. The 2's divide out, and then the sine with the square divide out. So ultimately, we're left with just sine theta over cos theta. And what is this equal to? Yeah, good old tangent theta. Done. <coughs> Take a look at part B. You're like, uh, I don't see any double angles. True. But let's see if you can rewrite tangent squared in terms of sine and cosine. Remember how tangent was really just equal to sine over cos? So let's rewrite this as 1 minus sine squared theta over cos squared theta, all over 1 plus sine squared theta over cos squared theta. Okay. Now, to do this, what we can do is perhaps trying to rewrite the numerator with only one fraction. So I think this would just be cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Okay, remember what I did was I just tried to make uh, both have the same denominator of cosine squared theta. Okay, doing the same thing with the bottom it means that the bottom now also becomes cos squared theta plus sine squared theta all over cos squared theta. When we have a big division here, we can rewrite this as cos squared theta minus sine squared theta over cos squared theta divided by cos squared theta plus sine squared theta all over cos squared theta dividing the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal so that's just cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta all over cosine squared theta times cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta and lo and behold these divide out and what do we have left over? Wow. Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta all over cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Now, at this point in time, don't make the fatal mistake many of your math friends will do. Oh, look at that. Cos, cos, cancel, sine, sine, cancel. Huh. 1 minus 1, 1 plus 1, that's 0, over 2, that's 0. Don't ever do that. <laughs> you cannot cancel when there is a plus and minus. Okay? That's like me asking you to do the following. Let me just get rid of all this stuff. Okay? That's like me saying, oh, here's the fraction let's say three-fifths okay oh that's two plus one that's two plus five oh yeah the twos cancel out 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's equal to one fifth now. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go further. That's zero plus one, and this is like uh, four plus one. So the ones cancel. Out. Oh, yeah, that becomes zero. Uh, uh. Don't do that kind of math. Okay. Bad news. Bad news. Bad news. But what is good news in this case? Can we just leave off at this step in red, or can we go further and do a little bit more simplification? If you notice, the numerator is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, and that's just a double angle identity of cosine 2 theta. I am very happy. And if on the denominator, you notice that that's cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, and that's the Pythagorean theorem, which equals to 1, I'd be even more ecstatic, because ultimately, this just simplifies to cosine 2 theta. Yay! All right. Hope this is good. Okay. Very much like last day's video. And this last example we're doing is also very much like last day's video. <laughs> okay. Given that tangent A equals three quarters and oh, I've thrown in some crazy stuff. Cosecant B equals to negative ten over root three, where both A and B are in quadrant three. Please evaluate each expression. And once again, draw to help you out. Sine 8. Okay. Ooh, interesting stuff. Okay, well, let's draw the picture first this time. Okay? This is a review from last day, so you should be able to do this. Okay? I'm going to be quiet. You try it. By the way, quadrant 3. So, hmm, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Hmm. So this is actually negative 3. This must have been negative 4. And to figure out the radius, yep, you guessed it. Pythagoras. The radius is always positive, by the way. Okay. Sine, once again, is defined as y over r. That would be negative 4 over 5. Cosine of angle A is defined as x over r. That's negative 3 over 5. Okay. Now, for the one next door with cosecant, that's a little bit different too, because now I'm doing those reciprocal identities, but nonetheless, cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine. So 1 over sine b equals to negative 10 over root 3. If I were to flip that around, then sine b is just root 3 over negative 10. I'd probably put the negative up with the root 3, because I believe 10 will become the radius. Okay. Drawing a picture once again in quadrant 3. Y value is negative root 3. The radius is 10. Pythagoras to the rescue. Kind of weird, but nonetheless. X equals to root 97, but because it's in quadrant 3, we better make it negative. And from here, then we can figure out cosine of B. That's just negative root 97 over 10, and tangent of b, that's just negative root 3 over root 97 negative. So that just equals to a positive. How about I'll just write down root 3 over root 97. Okay. All right. You're all set to simplify and find the exact expression for all these double angle identities now okay sine 2a we'll use the formula 2 sine a cos a we know that sine a is equal to negative 4 fifths cos a is negative 3 fifths 2 times 4 times 3 is 24 all over 25 and there's your answer for sine a, 2a. Sine 2a. Taking a look at tangent, 
you have to go find the double angle identity for tangent 2b. That's just 2 times tangent of b all over 1 minus tangent of b all squared. So we'll just plug in the values for this one. We get 2 times tangent b, which is root 3 over root 97. The numerator, or the denominator, sorry, is 1 minus tangent b is just that nice root that we're going to now square. Squaring makes life quite nice because the top now becomes just 2 root 3 over root 97. The bottom is 1 take away 3 over 97. And that just simplifies to 94 over 97. And if we wanted to rewrite this a little bit nicer, once again we're doing division, so 2 root 3 over root 97 divided by 94 over 97 is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal 2 root 3 over root 97 times 97 over 94. I guess these two here, the 97 and the root 97, simplify to just root 97. So 2 root 3 times root 97 all over 94. I guess that's 2 and then 97 times 3. What's that? 271. Oh, I can't do this. I'm so tired. Print out the calculator. Are you tired? Yeah, I'm tired. We're all tired, right? That's just life. Okay, so 3 times 97. What am I thinking? 291. Duh. Over 94. The 2 and the 94 can simplify. So root 291 over 47. Wow. There you go. Okay, last one, cos 2b minus cos 2a. You choose which one you want to simplify these two because you've got choice when you use cos. Okay? Um, I, I don't care what you actually use, but I think for me, I'm just going to try and mix things up. I'm going to use this one, 2 cos squared b minus 1. And then for cos 2a, I'm going to switch it around. We'll go 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Once again, it doesn't matter, but I just want to mix things up. Cosine b, I know from above, is negative root 97 over 10. So negative root 97 over 10, all squared. Take away 1. Minus 1 minus 2, now sine a, or sine a. Oh yes, negative 4 fifths times negative four-fifths, all squared. Doing some nice simplification now. Two, that's what? 97 over 100. Take away one. Hmm, that's, I guess, just 97 over 50. Take away one. And 97 over 50, take away one. That's 50 over... Ooh, that's 47 fiftieths. We'll simplify this side. This is uh, 1 take away 2. That's just 16 over 25, which is easily equal to 1 minus 32 over 35. The 1 is the same thing as 25 over 25. So 25 minus 32 seems to be negative 7. So that's minus negative 7 over 25. Be nice if they're in the same denominator, so I'm going to change that right now. So 47 over 50. Two negatives become a plus, and if I want to write the fraction 7 over 25 with the same denominator as the first, I think I should just double it times by 2, times by 2, so that's 14. 47 plus 14, that seems to be 61. And there you have it, your answer for cos 2b minus cos 2a. We're done double angles.